Property damage here is estimated at more than $13 million. Today, people return to salvage the important things from what was left of their homes. Alice Valentine recovered a watch but lost most everything else. We're all okay. Mm -hmm. What about your house? Total. It just got eerily quiet. And after that quiet, it just got like you were in a washing machine. Just everything just twisting and, and ripping. Um, and unfortunately, the neighbor's roof hit us, direct hit on the corner of the house where we were. So then the block started paving in a little bit. You climb out and there's nothing left. You know, inside walls, um, no two-car attached garage, uh, my brother's Ford Maverick sitting on its headlights uh, with the electric wires wrapped around it. Tragedy sometimes pulls people together. You know, as a teenage girl, you know, my focus wasn't just on me anymore. It was on, wow, you know, Things happen outside our control and, and bad things are outcomes. So what can we do to make this better? We covered a IUP football game. We went to a fair board meeting in the middle of nowhere. And then we were headed to a high school playoff game. Um, well, we never made it to that game. So the car just started the hydroplane. Uh, I threw my arms up and we hit a tree. Uh, when the car came to a stop, my head was bleeding. So I'm like, oh, you have to get towels for my head. And as he got towels for my head, I looked over and my arm wasn't in my sleeve. It was laying on the door sill. And I thought, well, that's weird. And then it, it dawned on me that, yeah, the, the arm wasn't completely attached anymore. It took a little discovery to figure out how I was going to do that. First I thought, well, rehabilitative therapy, you know. Um, but that's a lot of bureaucracy and, you know, I couldn't see myself telling somebody that I couldn't get them a wheelchair if they needed a wheelchair. So then I thought, well, we can look at the mental side. And, and then I moved on from there to become a licensed professional counselor. Part of Steeler training camp is, you know, participating in the drills and meeting the other players or participants and listening to their stories. Like, where are you from? I mean, they come from England and Hawaii and all over the world to have a common interest for a love of a sport and in particular a love of a team. Is your love of a team the Steelers? Absolutely. Yeah. It always has been. Tried to get me a Browns outfit for her Halloween one year and I refused to wear it.
of all the sports, golf was going to be the easiest. Um, my dad thought tennis, you know, but he thought, well, you know, I wouldn't be any good and, and you know, nobody would want to play with me. I, you know, they kind of think of themselves a little bit. And I said, no, nope, I'm going to play golf. Uh, give me two years and I'll beat you and you'll never beat me again. And that's what I did. About two years into playing, I found this organization called the National Amputee Golf Association. And um, the accident was in 93 and 96. I went to my first tournament in Marshfield, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. And I haven't missed a national tournament since 1996. Uh, worked my way into it and as an uh, Eastern trustee, I have to host the tournament every five years. So every five years they say, I want to take it to my area, Erie, Pennsylvania. Every five years they say, no. We're going to go to Virginia Beach. We're going to go to, you know, some, some place more in their eyes to us. And I'm like, you have to trust me, it's beautiful there. So finally, they let me host it here. And it's going to be at Peak and Peak. Thank you.